Yo, what is up everybody? It's Jay the Great here back with another video and today I have with me the great Thunder God as well. Did you want to say out to the people, Thunder God? Well, what's going on guys? TG or Thunder God here. Thank you to Jay for having me. Yes, sir. So in today's video, we'll be doing a, an interesting topic, we believe, with that being, as you can tell the title, each Akatsuki duo versus a five Kage. So to preface this video, the format will be each iteration of the Akatsuki within the narrative prior to their deaths, of course. So for example, we'll be scaling and discussing not healthy Itachi, but rather a less prime version of Itachi, which we'll get to later. So the parameters will be equivalent to that of moderate versus a five Kage, such as no prep time. And additionally, to make the conclusion to each altercation as accurate as possible, we will presuppose that each member of the, their respective sides have the knowledge they do in the original narrative on their opponents. So for example, Onoki will be aware of Deidara since they both are from the same village and clearly had history based off their altercation during the war arc. So that's the video format for you guys. So you guys are aware of how this is going to go. We'll go stage by stage, discuss each uh, scenario. It won't be like a gauntlet or anything like that. It will just be one, uh, one altercation for each duo versus a five cog respectively. And we'll go from there. So we'll start off right from the top. So first off we have Hidung and Kakazu versus a five Kage. This one's probably the easiest of the altercations to conclude on. And this is why Hidung arbitrarily competed with Asuma with even Kakazu saying he could die if he is not cautious and did okay against Beishar and Kakashi in their altercation. So that's where he scales going into this. Now Kakazu is certainly more impressive than Hidon, performing better than Hidon did against Beishar and Kakashi, being able to actually land hits on him on multiple occasions and sort of pressing him in the battle that they ensued in, implying he is more definitively relative to Kakashi. You can argue uh, superior or inferior, but he's around that level is the point. So. Aside from this, with his five hearts, he can use all five chakra natures and also has his diamond armor. However, he neither has adequate feats to deem him as mid to high Kage level. At best, they re they just reached the threshold for Kage, being able to compete probably with Kages of only of only maze caliber at best, and that's me being generous in terms of caliber, speed, etc. Hence, unfortunately, for the Yakatsuki side. This duo does not even compare to the caliber of the five kage with a being more than fast enough to blitz both garas sam most likely being fast enough to restrain and damage them and even tsunade probably being fast enough to one shot them with her high ap ability as well now to give some hope for this duo their best win condition would be some kind of perfectly implemented strategy where kakazu maybe restrains mei and he don't get to cut off on her does the ritual and does it to the other Kage respectfully. However, this is nearly impossible as again, they clearly lack the caliber of abilities and the speed to contend with the Kage, uh, let alone kill them. So in the end, their chances of success is near zero. And conversely, the Kage's chances of success is near 100% as, as these two pale in comparison to the Kage. Um, but what did you think about this uh, this stage, Thunder God, if you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, it, it's pretty bad. You know, Kakashi's a great measure off these two. You could also maybe look at Naruto um, and how Naruto's, it was pretty much said to surpass everybody in the Leaf once he attained Sage Mode and was fighting Pain. He was pretty much said to be in a class of his own. Threat Kage obviously being more comparable to QB Naruto in speed. But you would have to look at it like, okay, base Naruto was already performing well against Kagazu. He gains another power tier. Now he becomes more of a rival to the five, um, Kage individually. This isn't even talking about all five of them. But to get to the bottom of it, even if you were generous, like to, for example, like Kagazu, and you said maybe Diamond Morph, doesn't make any difference against Particle Style. It's just going to bypass all of that. Exactly. Pretty much. There's no there's no real hope for Kagazu there. Same with Hidan. Uh, the hearts are just not making a difference. Each of the Kage were fighting, you know, a, a Wood Susano clone. So it, the, the hearts just are overwhelming them. I'm sorry to say. And if. By any chance they do get pressured, I mean, Onoki's large scale particle style is just way too much. So, I mean, this one seems pretty definitive. Um, the Kakashi individually just was doing well against both these opponents. Uh, and obviously, you know, the five Kage, arguably two of the Kage on their own would be above Kakashi. So, you know, just kind of look at it like that. But, oh, they would pretty much overwhelm uh, Hidan and Kakazu. I would say pretty low dim, honestly speaking. Yeah, exactly. So, as you guys could probably already educatively guess, when me and Thunder Guy were discussing this, it was a quick, uh, you know, kind of outline because he and Kakuzu just pale in comparison to the five Kage, and simply put, they would get dealt with pretty casually. These guys are struggling with base Sharn and Kakashi, who himself pales in comparison. So, as you guys could have already guessed, this one was quite quick, but for format purposes, we obviously had to start from there. Um, now we jump into the next stage, which is 
Data uh, actually before we start, did you have any more final thoughts on that? Or did you uh Nah they get that... annihilated. They're yeah, they get so, lost. <laughs> like I'm actually like myself, I'm like trying to think of more credit to give them, but there is no more credit to give them. They're just you know inferior. So. Bad. Yeah. Um so yeah, so now we get to Data and Sasori versus the five Kage. Uh did you want to start with this one? What do you think about uh about that? Uh, altercation. So, so uh, data on Sasori are very interesting um, because you know I, I think they're they're much more relevant from the from a scaling perspective and stat wise. Um, though I, I will say like you kind of run into a couple issues for data right off the bat, being that he's able to have like a ten like a nine out of ten high difficulty fight against heavy Sasuke, and we actually saw like a more developed, stronger version of Sasuke in the Five Kage Summit. Pretty much had oh, he was performing well against the Raikage, but obviously like it was a very like pitch back and forth fight. There were he was obviously still yeah. struggling. The Raikage had a pretty big speed disparity. So right off the bat, you have that that speed disparity that is present. Um, there also is a bit to talk about with Onoki and how maybe you could say Datera was like a pseudo rival to Onoki at least in the air. But again, the problem with that is a not only is Datera sweating as an Edo Tensei, which is kind of crazy. But also the fact that particle style does have a um, pretty hard, hard counter a lot of data as explosives. It's just going to make it so they're going to get puffed away. There's no explosion. It's just going to tear right through them. So you kind of have like, okay, data is already questionably on the level of one of the five Kage. And then you kind of add in four more. It doesn't look too good. So obviously you kind of have to talk about Saucer and see how he maybe makes up the difference. Did you want anything to data um, or did you want to jump to Saucer? Yeah, so to, to give more scan to Data Rex Thunder, I did a great job there. Um, like you said, he still he he essentially stalemates Sasuke. And the only reason Sasuke survived was, was because he reverse summoned himself with Monda, with you know, with Monda not being happy about that. So essentially this they stalemated, implying blatant relativity, like Thunder God said. And now to go a step further with that, Kadin then says after the altercation with, with uh Deidara, he says she says, How could you have ever cured Orochi killed Orochimaru? He says, Oh, it's just because he was sick. Uh, that's the only reason I was able to. And he had no reason to lie. He clearly despises Orochimaru. Uh, he despises yeah. him so much that he killed him. I mean, literally, just, he, he caused him to become deceased. Um, so off of that, we can create some more scaling here. You know, when Orochimaru has uh, no arms and fights 3 tail Naruto, it says, you pe you, you're not even in Sasuke's league. And this was before post-absorption Orochimaru Sasuke. So that gives you a, a, like a range where he's at. So I would deduce, uh, me and Thunder God both like, agreed, that he would be somewhere in the range of a three tail and four tail Naruto. That's where Sasuke would probably be. If we're being generous, he could probably maybe even be four tail because he did get Orochimaru's abilities and get more powerful. He even states that himself after battles. He says, I'm healing yeah, quicker and stuff like that. Yeah, stamina buff. Exactly. Yeah, he gets yeah. a Orochimaru style substitution. He gets a little bit more of an arsenal. So, you know, there, there is a little bit more to that. But yeah, I agree. Continue. Yeah. And so essentially, Daedara, you could argue, would be in that range. There's a couple of uh, physical traits that he is inferior to Sasuke in, in their altercation. He says he's too quick for me. Uh, things like that but they're relative in caliber is the point so that's where data stacks up right at best he's like a weekend signing level sort of tier level right that, that, that's where he would be at best if we're comparing him to sasuke and giving sasuke a generous uh, scaling now sasori like thunder god said um is quite interesting so sasori has quite the resume um uh, people tend to overlook it they tend to lowball him a lot of the times or highball him so essentially what he did in his career is he he was able to defeat the third kaze kage in a tough battle i um, mean it's even stated in the data book and he i think he iterates that as well so he's relative to the kaze kage and the kaze kage is stated as the strongest kaze kage ever of all time in sans shinobi history um he's probably not stronger than borto gara but that's a whole different uh, you know can of worms the, the point is in shippuden He's arguably the strongest Kaze Kage of all time up until the Boruto narrative. Now, for those that say, oh, did, did Garo get stronger during the war arc, though? Didn't he get more powerful? Actually, the data book states that him and Raz's fight during the war arc was a fierce battle, implying relativity as well. A lot of people don't know that's a data book statement that exists. It'll be shown here for sure. So that'll put Sasori transitively in that rare air as well. So that's where Sasori is. So now to add more to the scaling, Chio, first first of all, is fearful of the Kaze Kage. You see it on her face. and but what she iterates when she sees Sasori summon the third Kazakage puppet. On top of that, she states in the war arc that she was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hanzo on several occasions, implying relativity, because if you fight someone several times, that means you survived the battle and that you're probably relative to them. This is the most rational conclusion yeah. to come to. Hence, Sasori is even above that, right? Hanzo, as we know, spared all three signing. Of course, that wasn't the prime iterations. That was young signing. He gave them the name of the signing. Um, out of mercy. To add on top of that, Jiraiya says, I can't believe someone alone was able to kill Hanzo, right? That being pain, of course. So Sasori, 
I would say is actually safely above signing level um, as, to, as far as caliber is concerned, based off all those puzzle pieces I sort of like scavenged up and put together. So that's where you have these guys at. Right? You have Sasori above signing level. You have Daedra in like that sub signing level. But like me and Thunder God saw which was a common theme here, is the speed factor. That's one of the most significant factors in this multivariate equation, if you will, and that being the Rekage speed, specifically. Um, and unfortunately, despite the scaling I just provided, they don't display levels of speed comparable to the Rekage, so he'd simply be faster than them. Um, now, as far as the scenario would go, Onoki, like Thunder God said, is a pretty good counter to Daedra. They both levitate. They both seem to respect each other, with, I would argue, Daedra respecting Onoki more, implying maybe some level of superiority. But despite that, I would have a relativity, uh, like relative levels. So those guys would kind of cancel each other out, perhaps. They'd be in the skies fighting, kind of like a dogfight, like airplanes fighting in the skies. Um, him, yeah, like, yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, like using his uh, particle style to, you know, dissipate the, the clay bombs. And as we know, the particle style is a durability negation ability. So that'd be perfect for uh, Daedara when he's like using his clay. Uh, he would just use his particle style to get rid of it. So Sori has an interesting arsenal as well. Um, we know that he could use poison. We know he could use his hundred puppets. And like Thunder God said before when we were planning, he said he has like this sort of um, like the best word is durability like enhancing ability. Negation. Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like yeah. a negation. You, you want to talk ability. about this? Yeah, go ahead if you want to add to that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting because you see like when he's fighting Sakura, and I will say this is only with the puppet body that's he, that he's inha uh, inhabiting. Yeah. There actually is like a buff uh, also in terms of like the durability of the uh, the puppet body he's inhabiting. Um, you also see this when Sakura punches it and it doesn't just break, it cracks. But once she actually like pulls, the, it's, it's when she pretty much like uses the antidote and is pulling the wire in from Sasori, she's able to like get a land, a direct hit on him. But instead of just simply like shattering, he he pretty much separates and dissipates like the 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 puppet body parts which kind of allows him to almost like not take the brunt of the attack and just reassemble himself so kind of like disperse the energy so you have this like interesting notion that okay with these fighters with absurd strength like Tsunade he might be able to perform a similar feat again with his primary puppet body he's not obviously going to do this with the third Kazakagi puppet because yeah if he would have he could have you know what i'm saying so is that everything but it is interesting notice that i don't see too uh too many people bring up what's about saucer exactly yeah like, like we said like we both noticed he's just overlooked a lot he, he is quite powerful but like we said in this altercation the, the, the odds are against them. I mean, we have the Rikage speed, which none, which either one can't contend with, uh, more than likely. Even Daedara says Hebi Sasuke is too quick for him, let alone you know, the, the Rikage, who's competing with a stronger, faster iteration of Sasuke later. Um, so these guys don't so, show those levels of speed, and that's where the problem would come. Now, we discussed win cons, and the best win conditions for the Akasuke duo here, respectively, would be some sort of uh, Sasori and Daedara plan. Maybe Sasori uses like a large radius of poison. Obviously, Daedara would have to exit the premises, um, like exit that radius of effect if he uses like clouds, like kind of like he did against Sakura and Chio. Or Daedara using microscopic bombs, as the Five Kage have no uh, Dojutsu users. They have no Byakugan users. They have no Sharingan users. None of the Kages have those type of abilities. So they most likely wouldn't be able to see it, which would be a problem. If he's able to dissipate that attack, um, that could be very, very detrimental. But going back to the speed, if we're being realistic, you know, with the Rikage, you know, going, being in character and Onoki most likely manipulating gravity to enhance his abilities, these guys would get blitzed pretty quickly. Puppets would get shed through like knives through hot butter with the Rikage speed and AP. Um, the Shunade strength on top of that. Again, Daedaro would be hard countered by Onoki. He knows everything about him. He seems to have, they seem to have history. So more than likely, this duo would fail. Um, the chances of success for them is it, it, it's a it exists but it's very low because again the numbers advantage they'd have the speed advantage the kage would have um, gara using a sand to probably like like thunder god said before recording like kind of like disable the puppets could get like sands between the crevices sands between like the, the, the puppet holes things like that that'd be very problematic um so more than likely the, the kage would win this um did you have anything to add to that to the uh the way this uh, should go maybe, maybe a potential because i will say you know like the the thing is too it's uh c4 is that uh, maybe you could argue like uh c0 maybe nuke some of the kage um, if data decides to do that but yeah in the case of c4 you could even make an argument that particle style might just inherently like if he sees that it's the di giant data is bomb even after it explodes like a large-scale particle style due to how it like destroys at a molecular level yeah might actually also be able to just disintegrate the molecular bombs it kind of gets into like the molecular or cellular argument um but from what i've seen they should be comparable but that is also something to know like that that it could probably just honestly neg 
But um, you kind of have to argue that they, um, Onoki does like the large cube, which I mean, he does when amped by Tsunade's chakra. So maybe he can't do it by himself, but again, he was fatigued. So maybe it's just a move that requires a lot of chakra that, and that it's something he can do while he's at full power. So, you know, there is that, but I will say, yeah, that, that's also something to throw in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like Thunder God said, Onoki's abilities are quite interesting. Like he can use this sort of beam particle style, like he did against Madara. And like Thunder God just said, he can use the cube where he could actually uh, contort and manipulate the radius of it. Apparently, he, his particle style is large enough to even destroy an entire island, uh, which was implied by, uh, I believe it was someone in the war arc when uh, he was about to level the Turtle Island. Um, so he, he, he's capable of creating particle styles with that large of a radius of effect. So if he uses a particle style cleverly, especially against Daedra, he could even theoretically contain the blast radius or just erase it because it's on a molecular level. Um, even the microscopic bombs as well. Um, that's why he's such a hard counter because let's say uh, Dator gets, let's say he gets super, super desperate and he uses the same attack he used, used against Sasuke with C0. He could literally contain the blast radius and just erase it on a molecular level bef before Dator is able to execute the bomb and make it detonate. So. He's just a hard, hard counter, and overall, it's just it's unlikely that Sasori and Daedara could, could defeat the Kage here. Again, due to the speed, due to the numbers advantage, um, etc. But yeah, that's, that's what we think about that. Did you have any final thoughts on that, though, uh, before we go to the nah, next? Nah, particle style is just so broken. It just doesn't seem yeah. like that because Madara was absorbing it every time yeah, the guy yeah. <laughs> it's, it's It's so crazy. Like, dudes do not understand it. Just like... He really did 20 he did one shot 25 wood susano clones like he really literally did that literally so like, it, it, it obviously you know with sport but still like it was a crazy feat so you know particle style is just nutty exactly i agree completely so yeah that's that stage it's a little bit more interesting um their margin for error is wider they have more room to mess up than you know on Kaku, those guys are just blatantly inferior so these guys have a little bit more leeway for a success rate but yeah like we said uh the fog kage most likely win that one so that's that stage um, now we get to pain and conan versus the five kage so now the complicated power scaling aspect for pain is essentially how strong he is at his best since we never get that on we never get that on display during his shinobi career especially with the fact that the farther the paths are from Nagato, uh, the weaker they become with Nagato sort of being like the signal, the chakra signal, if you will. So it's quite complicated. Um, now, like we said, we're, we're presupposing that this battle is taking place in the same location as uh, Madara fought the five Kage. And if we presuppose Nagato is in the rain village or in the same location he was during the pain arc, he wouldn't be exactly close. So they wouldn't be at like rain, uh, the, the six paths of pain wouldn't be at rain village levels. Uh, they wouldn't be at the, like, the optimal levels. Again, it's unquantifiable how much weaker they, they become the farther they are. There's no like numerical value to represent the, the, the rate of decline in their ability or anything like that. I would say they're relative to their full power. I don't think that they they become like tenfolds times weaker or anything like that. It doesn't yeah, seem to be yeah, implied, yeah. you know? So I would say they're close to their full power. Now, before we get into the speed, to quickly just scale Conan, she doesn't scale that high. And it's just because of the, the fact that she doesn't have many feats, right? She has... Her altercation with Jiraiya, right? Jiraiya disposes of her quite quickly and removes her from the equation. Obviously, he was a hard counter because of the oil, the toad oil that he could use um, that kind of like wettened uh, her paper jutsu and paper bombs and all that. So, But because that's like the only empirical piece of evidence we have non-prep time Conan using, because again, these guys are not prep time, she's like sub Sani level at best. That's being generous. But yeah, did you have anything to add to their scaling before we move on to like the, the battle itself? No, I will say this about pain. You know, there there is a, a seg. There's like an a part of this where there's a lot of lore implications that pain himself is above. Uh, and this is off Obito that he's above any of the five Kage individually. That being that Obito just never factored in the, or he never expected pain to lose. Like that was never something in his initial plans. Like he never thought yeah. that was going to be the case. But it still happened. So if you kind of look at that, like it does somewhat imply like, okay, Obito obviously knows of the five Kage, so this would include them. Um, so there is a layer to that where, okay, what does that necessarily mean? I mean, you know, there is some truth to this too, because we do never see full power pain on exactly. display. We just see him. Yeah. Uh, we just see three of the uh, three of the least offensive paths of pain against Jiraiya. You never see like the Diva path, which is like literally, you know, I want to say like 80% of Pain's power, but the Diva path, like not being present in fights is crazy. Yeah. And also Pain fatigued, also without the Diva path for most of his fighting against Sage Naruto, who also just wins that fight objectively until the Nine Tails intervenes. So, you know, kind of looking at all that, 
you just never really get this measure, but Pain is still able to remain relevant to these characters who are also comparable to the Gokage tier fighter. Um, even if fatigued or like suppressed states. So it just kind of goes to show like, you know, there is some more implications you can kind of take into account in one direction or another. Um, whereas maybe like some, some of the Kage have maybe better feats that might give them that. So that, that's probably what I'd add about uh, Pain. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point because me and Thunder God discussed before the video the speed aspect, right? Which we'll get into now. And like you just said, lore wise, there's a good premise to be made that the path the pain, specifically the diva path, who's the most physically gifted, is probably on the level of Edo and Nagato uh, relative to that. So that means he most likely that at least the diva path would most likely be faster than even the Rekage, as again we all know Edo and Nagato dealt with Killer B, uh, Killer B and KC1 Nagato very easily, um, reacted to them restrained them etc from a lore, so from a lore perspective it's it's definitely a, a premise to be made and to be and it's certainly a valid one but we said feats wise obviously because like we both said we don't see them at their best the only thing we can rationally conclude based on the empirical evidence is that pain is most likely slower than the Rekage because we just never get a gauge of how fast he truly is or how capable he truly is at his best. We never get to see that. And obviously that's because he was so much more powerful in the narrative compared to most characters, including Naruto. So we have yeah, to go- I'm going to add something in too if I can yeah, real quick. Just, just interject. Oh, my bad. I got to say something too. Also, th this is a constant in Naruto. Um, stronger does not always have to refer to in speed. A lot of people fall into this rabbit hole, but like, yeah. you can be known for a specific jutsu or have a character trait about you that makes you stronger than like everybody else. Um, and a lot of people like to, you know, listen in debates and like discussing these videos, obviously speed's important, but a lot of times in the show, a character will kind of be somewhat slower than somebody yet still be able to pull away with the W because obviously there's character traits, there's, hub there's hubris, there's strategies. But I do want to note too that like Pain could be stronger in the sense that, oh, he has more raw firepower. He'd be able to overwhelm somebody of the Raikage speed or you just favor like the rush down like speed tactic. But I just wanted to, to note that because like, you know, yeah. I, 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 see that, I see that a lot with like a lot of people fall into traps like, oh, A character is faster than B character. So it's a slaughter, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, exactly. I had to add that in, but continue, please. My yeah. bad. I, no, you're good. I, I agree completely, actually. And that's actually a good tangent to discuss briefly. So, like Thunder God said, battles and fictional based reality, especially battle based anime, it's a multivariate equation. And you have guys that are revered for their speed, some guys like Minotone, some guys like Ray Kage, and you have some guys that are revered for the raw power they possess, guys like Nagato. Guys like Madara, guys like Hashirama, you know, so he's right. It, styles certainly make fights on top of that. Like, for example, Tsunade versus Onoki. Their arsenals are much different, but guess what? Onoki has a durability negating ability, so Tsunade's forte would be useless because even in her 100 ceiling, she'd be yeah. vanquished on a molecular level. So that's just an analogy to like, to sort of reinforce Steelman, uh, Thunder Guy's premise where speed isn't the end all be all, right? Because they're, like, like we said, arsenals and power scaling and when it comes to concluding as accurate as possible you have to take in every factor in the equation all the variables in this multivariate equation so that's a very good point he's right it, it's certainly not one-dimensional it's not a one-dimensional analysis it's a multi-dimensional analysis you have to take all dimensions and variables into consideration here so saying that pain is more powerful than the Rekage doesn't automatically allow you to presuppose oh he's faster no not necessarily like yeah, yeah. He, he, he's able to level an entire village can the rikage do that no but maybe the rikage is faster that still doesn't negate the fact that you know nagato has more raw power so that's a really good point actually and that's a good way to segue into this so when it comes to the battle speed will obviously be important of course and we both kind of deduce that he's probably slower especially being away from the signal than the rikage um, but he has very high ap abilities so depending on how he fights it would certainly dictate the success rates of Pain and Conan. Now, Conan would have a very tough time because similar to Daedra, Onoki would be a hard counter to Conan as well. She can levitate, he can levitate. She has paper bombs, he has durability negation. He has the ability to blast the particle style, which which just erases everything in its path. Uh, that would be very, very problematic for her. Um, so Pain and Conan would have to strategize the best method for success. Now, to try to paint canvas for the best method I believe it would be something of the sort of maybe pain levitating with Conan, her maybe watching his rear and him watching hers and using Shin or Tensei every time Ninjutsu comes their way. That would, all, that would also like negate the, abil the abilities of the Rekage as he can't levitate, things like that. This one really comes down to the wire. Um, I don't know if you want to go first and kind of conclude on this, but uh, what do you think, how, how do you think this goes? Like more, who more than so, likely wins, you know? 
my opinion on this is that Payne has to really overwhelm the five Kage initially. I um, mean, can do this a number of ways. Maybe overwhelm them with summons and whatnot. Um, you know, there's a lot of rush down while preparing some of his larger scale techniques. But the problem is, right, is that once the Kage, and I will say this, the Kage will be able to combat the lesser paths of pain, as we've seen in Fear Shinobi do, like such such as Kakashi. They will be able to at a certain point. Um, and the problem is too is that even though Pain can revive them with the Naraka pad and whatnot, it's not like the Kage also can't intervene. And they're no stranger to group battles, obviously, off the moderate clones of the wood clones. They're each individually, like, able to hold their own for a prolonged period of time. Yeah, Madara is holding back, but, like, still, most Shinobi probably wouldn't do well in that situation anyway. Like, just because the wood, the wood clones are still trying to kill the Kage, like, they're slashing them with the swords and whatnot. So, there is a layer to that. But Pain, re realistically... He has a couple options for victory. Chibaku Tensei, or like the large-scale Shinra Tensei that he did on the Elite Village. Both these options are not in character for Pain to use. But if they they do happen, like I do think they would work in, in taking down the um, the five Kage. Onogi might be questionable, honestly, since he did survive the Tengai Shinsei. Maybe yeah. you could also say, you could also make a case actually Tsunade might survive too. Um, she can maybe summon Katsuyu to shield the other Kage as well, similar to what she did in the Leap Village, which, by the way, if that's the case, it's over for Pain. So, like, don't even, you know, that, that's it, because he's obviously going to be very fatigued, and it's just going to be, like, four Kage against the Diva path. But, realistically, Chibaku Tensei doesn't really use it in character. We even see this as he's done down to his last pet, uh, path of Pain. He doesn't even use it against Naruto. And the problem with Chibaku Tensei, too, is that the Diva path has to retreat towards Nagato to actually use it. He has to move closer, so that is something not too many people know. Aside from that, Payne's best chance is to, like, rush down the Kage. And it, I just don't think it's as likely that he's just going to be able to, like, fully rush them down. Um, especially when you consider the fact that, right, for example, Raikage versus Payne, like, is a little bit questionable. And then you have Onoki who can, like, make the Raikage almost like a speed tier above himself by lightening it, making him lighter. So it's like, there's obviously going to be some some places where, like, paths of Payne are just getting dropped. Because they're all not the same strength either, so... Th that's pretty clear. Like, for example, once the Prey Depth ad drops, Particle Style rips. So, the way I see this, and me and Jay were kind of talking about this, it, it has to be, like, off-rip. Pain instantly overwhelms the Kage, which just doesn't seem likely. It's, it just yeah. seems much more uh, indicative that the Kage would survive and just systematically, like, break down Pain's abilities and start comboing him up, especially what they did uh, on a similar uh, level with Madara. It just, it just seems way more consistent. And obviously, once certain paths of Pain fall, again, like the Prey Depth path, Obviously, a Diva Path can, you know, blow back Particle Style with its, um, you know, polarity abilities. But again, there's four more Paths of Pain. So it's like, once you kind of get into stuff like that, it just, Pain just starts losing momentum. And it obviously isn't pretty good. And even like, I will say, some of his more niche abilities, like the Renegon Dog, just also get negged via Particle Style. Like, that, that, that's Literally. done. Like, it's going to just, yeah, yeah it's, it has no chance in that regard. So even some of his more niche abilities, maybe you could argue like the Renegon Chameleon would be useful because it could catch QB Naruto lacking. But again, this doesn't really win him the fight. You know what I'm saying? Even if he blows yeah. back a lot of the Kage. So even his more like niche ways of winning, um, you kind of just have to give him like a really like specific scenario where he Bonsho Tenning to the Raikage, um, you know, stabs him with the rods, paints him down and like takes him out. And then it's him versus the other four Kage as like, you know, he obviously has to take care, care of the speedster of the group, which again, it's just, it isn't that likely. So I know I went off on a little bit of a tangent, but like it's there, a lot of pains, like ways of winning just like are super, it's a super like Hail Mary scenario. I'll put it like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was a great explanation. And to bounce off of that, Nagato or Pain, whatever you want to call him, in character, doesn't fight, uh, you know, concisely. He, he, seem, he sees himself as superior to the vast majority of the Naoto verse. Like for example, Red in fan. the pain, yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, against Jiraiya, he didn't even need the Diva Path. Like, said the three weakest. Like, obviously, the pains, just looking at their performances respectively, they vary in power pretty substantially. We have guys like, like, we have paths that were literally destroyed by Konamaru, and then we have paths that are literally going toe to toe with Sage Mode Naruto. So, the discrepancy in the paths certainly exists. So, the weaker paths will be not much of a problem. I mean, if Konamaru is literally able to sing on one of them, the Kages will have no no problem dealing with that, uh, dealing with those caliber of pains, uh, past the pains. Now, Nagato doesn't, like I said, doesn't fight in a cutthroat manner. He sees himself as above others, like I said, with the Jirai altercation. And even in the, in the village of Konoha, he was like, I'm, I'm a god. I'm going to level your town. I'm going to beat all your shinobi. 
and I'm gonna take Naruto. Like he doesn't fight in a way where he's trying to eliminate you quickly and concisely. So Thunder God is certainly right. If we're if we're trying to be as accurate and as possible in our conclusion, Pain's not gonna just say, oh, let me just, let me chaotic shinder try and see the battlefield. Like that's not the first thing he's going to do here. This is not a village he's facing. These are five individuals. So him using like, using that is very unlikely. And as far as the Chibaku Tensei, you know, Thunder God made a good observation there as well. It seems that he has to be closer to Nagato, right? The 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 chakra signal, if you will, to utilize an ability of that that magnitude, of that caliber, right? He doesn't use it until the six tails, seven, eight tails, etc. of Naruto are chasing him, and then he's close enough to where like, all right, I could use it now. Um, so that's, it's, it's very likely that if the battle goes on long enough and he does have to resort to that, he would probably have to evade back to, to Nagato. And that, that would be very problematic with people like the Raikage chasing him at his heels. Um, so it's, it's very unlikely that he does that in character where he just tries to eliminate them in one shot. So yeah, we, we both decided that the margin for error for, for pain is smaller than the margin for, uh, for error for the Kage because they have the numbers advantage. They have great great arsenals to negate most of what pain can do, such as like Thunder God said, the summonings with uh, you know the particle style literally de negating durability. A lot of the, a lot of his abilities would be negated or dealt with with the arsenal that the five Kage have. So more than likely, uh, the f the pass of pain along with Kona would fail. Now to be generous, he'd have a better chance than Dator and Sasori, or obviously he'd own a Kakazu, but. The, the likelihood is more in favor for the Kage based off all, you know, with all the uh, pieces of empirical evidence and substantiations we just gave. So in the end, uh, Pain will most likely lose. But yeah, folks, that was probably the most complex due to the many factors and ambiguity that was involved in there. So next up we have Itachi and Kisame versus the five Kage. Uh, did you want to start with this one? What did you, what did you think about this uh, altercation? Oh, man. So, so... Kisame is interesting. Um, Kisame is pretty easy, in my opinion, to pinpoint in terms of strength and like what he's able to combat. Um, it just seems pretty cemented off of the B fight that base uh, Killer B and version one, uh, you know, Tail State uh, Killer B are both within Kisame's realm to like react to, combat, sap chakra off. He's able to, you know, combat that B confidently. Even like his lightning attack, he's able to rip chakra off them and whatnot. So. So that's where we kind of have like a mark in terms of Kisame. Uh, he also has a pretty good showing against Guy. We can talk about that more in a bit because um, I do think that showing is questionable, but it is a good showing. Yeah. Um, aside from that, though, Kisame is really the most threatening. Um, he's just absorbing shock from the opponent, obviously, when he formed the water shark bubble. Um, in this situation, obviously, the Raikage is going to be very good fuel for him as well as the other Kage. So he's also he's very susceptible to a lot of this stuff like a lot of other opponents, but he's also a type of fighter where... You know, he's going to be able to absorb a lot of the ninjutsu with um, some of maybe his water-based attacks and a lot of the chakra maybe fatiguing the Kage to a, um, their absolute limit. But, you know, so Kisame is pretty self-explanatory, I feel like, um, unless you maybe go with, like, some of his higher-end interpretations. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Kisame is interesting. Like you said, his water-based attacks are going to be problematic. His ability to eat chakra is quite uh, efficient from Adam. Mm -hmm. He even was able to kind of seep off the chakra of... Killer B, who's a perfect Jinchuriki, that's very impressive as well. So he'd certainly do that to the right Kage if he's able to kind of like leech onto him uh, like he did with the Killer B. So to scale Itachi though, we decided the best way to approach this is to presuppose that Itachi is on meds. Not necessarily at his prime, but near his optimal levels. Essentially about the caliber he was as an Edo, obviously not having the infinite chakra and stamina. We believe that's the best way to approach this without having to go too deep and get too complicated into how much how much weaker is Ita sick Itachi getting with the deteriorating health factor. So we're going to presuppose he's taking his meds, has his health restored to a substantial degree, and is near his levels he was uh, during his altercation. Uh, as an Edo. So that's where he's at. And to scale him, we know that you know, people hate to hear this. He arguably blitzed Nagato when Nagato had KCM Naruto and Killer B restrained respectfully. He was able to swap hands with KCM Naruto and also react to Killer B while they both tried to engage in combat with him simultaneously. And he was able to seal Nagato, which again is an arguable feat as well. But overall, the most rational conclusion to come to is that he's arbitrarily above KCM1 Naruto in terms of speed. Um, so that gives you like a, a, a gauge of where he's at in comparison to the Rikage, with the Rikage having his punch evaded by KCM1 Naruto at the initiation of the war. So not Itachi at the beginning would, being generous to the Rikage relative to him, would be relative to the Rikage in speed, possibly superior in speed. 
that would be quite quite the advantage to have at the beginning of this battle and now to get straight into the battle itself this will be quite interesting this is, a, this is another altercation that's quite interesting to discuss itachi and kisame actually have very complementary arsenals there are many combos of people that they could utilize here for example we could have kisame eating chakra right it's sort of seeping the power of the Rekage and the speed as a byproduct with this the less chakra he has and the lower versions he's in the slower he is and at that point Itachi would have a blatant advantage because if the Rekage is not at near his optimal speed the discrepancy starts to grow and grow and grow and then he'd be susceptible to things like Genjutsu, Tsukuyomi, the Tosuka Blade etc. Um, so he, he'd probably be the most problematic due to his speed Gara as well, we were discussing, would be kind of problematic because he, he might do what he did to do Madara, kind of yanking him out of the Susano with his sand, uh, which is something that he could more certainly do against Itachi in his sand. So th this is just quite interesting. How, how, but what did you have to add to that? How do you think this uh, this scenario goes? How did, how yeah, so I, I think fundamentally you need to look at why Itachi is a different fighter than Madara and how, like, they're not going to fight the same because Madara let the Kage slide with a lot. Like, he could have stopped a lot of their strategies that they performed on him. But was, like, in character, Madara just lets people, like, slam against his Susana. Like, he really doesn't care. Like, even when he's, like, sitting down and using killing Ashrama's wood clones, he's got the Susano out. Like, he's very casual with it. I mean, against the Kage, he's really just letting them slam against his ribcage. And it takes, like, a whole strategy by them to even break it. So it's kind of like... Okay, is Itachi going to let them do this? No. No, he's not, obviously. It's not the type of fighter Itachi is. He's not. He's, he's a lot more uh, He's a lot more practical with his Susano. He's a lot He's a lot more willing to use its full power. He's not going to hold back. Uh, maybe an example of this is like against Orochimaru. The minute he sees Orochimaru, full power Susano. Same thing with Nagato. The minute it was required, he just whipped it out. Very no-nonsense fighter. So I could definitely see uh, Itachi a lot more willing to pull out his full power Susano and press a lot of the Kage earlier on in this fight, as opposed to like what Madara did, and just kind of letting them do whatever they want. And the thing about Itachi Sano is like on top of it being fast on user, um, Ita the fact that Itachi's stats are also pretty definitively above any of the Kage, maybe arguably the Raikage and Lightened Raikage kind of depends on some presuppositions, but I, I yeah. you know, I, you know, maybe, maybe I can understand that. Um, but any other of the Kage are realistically just free like totska blade material in this case uh for for itachi and even if you don't argue the fact that like okay because he's alive like he's gonna have degrading eyesight um and his, there's gonna be some stamina hits from using the, his manga kill which i do agree um yeah. the problem is like the Ka the kage losing specific fighters except may i'm sorry to say it uh, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty detrimental to them like if they lose onoki or the raikage that's a big issue for them that's arguably both like impact them in different ways but the fact that he'll also have like Kisame. So for example, like I could see Kisame doing large scale water style um, against the Kage. Maybe Gara lifts the Kage up in the sand. Then Itachi, like kind of similar to what they did against like when Madara does the um, wide, you know, for, um, deep forest emergence. Itachi shoots out a Madarasu. There's going to be a lot going on. But again, like a Madarasu is detrimental to all of the Kage except uh, the Rai Kage. So it's like he has a lot of those instant one shot techniques. And if the Kage are ever held down or bogged down by anything, that or Tsukiyomi are going to be detrimental. And he doesn't, listen, you kind of have to, obviously, like, it's going to impact him. But, like, we're going off the idea that if he goes blind by the end of the fight, that's still his W. I think Jay agrees with that. Like, it would yeah. still, like, even if he used his MS ability. So, he basically would just have to, like, kind of look at it like this. He basically have to use five MS abilities, like, or just maintain the Susano for a prolonged period of time. I will say, um, but so Itachi's very threatening here, and then the fact that Kisame's war style is going to be very distracting to the Kage is going to be a big issue. Um, it just kind of depends, in my opinion, how they deal with Kisame, because if it's Itachi taking on the five Kage by himself, he's going to have a pretty difficult time. But if Kisame is doing all these large-scale distractions, it's going to kind of enable him to slip in and take out the Kage piece by piece. Exactly. So... Another thing that I, I believe a lot of people overlook when it comes to Itachi is the amount of stamina he actually has. Like, yes, in the original narrative, his, his, his health is deteriorating. But if you look at the Sasuke altercation, he utilizes multiple ninjutsus and at the end still has his perfect Susano up and Tulska Blades, uh, you know, Rochimaru. He actually uses quite a bit of jutsus. Um, he uses Firestyle, he uses Amaterasu, he uses the Susano, the Tosca Blade. You know, he uses several, and he even uses Genjutsu, obviously, when he was trying to play mind games with Sasuke. So, 
He his also, stamina. Just to throw in, I gotta yeah. say, like, he also, on top of that, has a clone go and fight Sasuke and place his Naruto under Genjutsu before also fighting Sasuke. Literally. So it's like, he's been using Chakra that whole time. So it, it's not insignificant. I just wanted to throw that in. I agree. I agree completely. And if we presuppose here, like we mean, then I'm going to have that he's on his meds and his health is near near restoration. And he's about Edo, not, Edo Hitachi level as far as caliber. That his stamina will be all right. It's not going to be fodder. He's not going to lose his eye, his eyesight in one Tsukuyomi or anything like that. He'll be able to fight for, I would say, a substantial amount of time. Not forever. He's not Nagato level of talker or anything like that. But yeah. he could he could fight for a prolonged amount of time. Um, and just having that speed advantage, like Thunder God and me said, is a big advantage for him in this altercation. Hisame would chip away being a great combatant up close. He would chip away at people's chakra. He'd go out the Rekage a few times with Samahada. He'd go out Tsunade a few times. You know, maybe get her out of her 100 healings mode if he ch if he chips away to enough chakra, uh, Onoki as well. Um, so it, it, they're a great team. Like we said, like I said, their arsenals and their styles complement each other very nicely. And like Thunder God said, the Susano is even faster than the user, and we've already established that Itachi in base is able to you know do what he does against the KCM Naruto. So if he's in a Susano, even the Rikage will struggle, and everyone else is just free meat for him with the Totsuka. I mean, he, we saw yeah. what, he's, what he's capable of doing in terms of speed. It, everyone's at a huge, huge disadvantage. And if we really add fuel to the fire and say Kisame is able to get the water dome off and then gets in that shark form and all the Kages are in there and, you know, Gar's sand, let's presuppose it like turns to mud and you can't even use sand, they're done for. I mean, it's free reign at that point. So in this altercation, we agree that as long as Itachi doesn't go blind here and it, the Kage aren't able to like deter them long enough to where he starts to get very fatigued, Itachi Kisame have the best odds in this altercation in comparison to the five Kage. They just have the arsenal, they have the one-shot abilities. I mean, we have to talk, talking about Tsukuyomi, Amaterasu, the Tosuka Blade, like we said, and then Kisame chipping away at them with the Water Dome, with Samahata, etc. So the margin for error for the Kage is quite small. They'd have to have the perfect game plan. You know, maybe theoretically, if we're, we're trying to talk wind conditions here, Onoka uses a large radius particle style and vaporizes Kisame or something like that. I think he lacks like the speed. like weighted boulders, like the yeah. Shishano, you know? Exactly, like Weight, weighted boulder. Down. That's a you great know? one as well. It's a great win con. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so those are like their best methods of success. Uh, I just think they lack the speed anyway. It, and like Thunder God said, and he's completely right, Itachi is far different than Madara. Madara was toying with these people out of arrogance and still defeated them. Itachi is much more cutthroat, much more practical, much more decisive in his actions. He's not going to sit there and be like, you guys are jokes. So let's, I'm going to take my time. He's going to get right to work and do what he has to do along with Kisame. And I, I believe they have, great, they have great teamwork as well. So they would Itachi, with his high intelligence, would decipher a very good method of success. He'd probably say, like we were just saying, chip away at their chakra. I'll get in my Susana. I'll start Tosuke Blaine, the slower ones. We'll deal with the Reikage, probably last or whatever. So their chances of success is very, very high here. But like going back to the, to the win conditions for the five Kage, it, it'd either be like Thunder God said, weighted boulder maybe on the Susano to slow it down, or a large uh, a large radius particle style. So that's what we think yeah. about that. But do you have any final thoughts on, on that one? On that I, I will say, um, you know, I, I'll put it like this for anybody who's wondering. Even if you think the five Kage win, which is fair, because I think this is like, a, you know, it kind of depends how like what you're, what you presuppose with a couple of these characters, like yeah. stat wise, you know, how you kind of have them state, uh, what their state is. I do, th we are of the opinion like Itachi and Kisame probably have the best chance in terms of the duos uh, we've listed so far in terms of like who could pull away a W. And that's because like the start, that, that's also how Itachi is fundamentally as a fighter. Yeah. I don't know if you want to throw this in on the stamina part because the, the one thing I did want to mention as they want to interrupt you was that like the main thing I see people cite with Itachi's stamina is that it's listed as 2.5 in the data book. Oh, but that's yeah. strictly talking about sick Itachi who's like near yeah. blind. That's not, that wouldn't be the version we're using in this case. So exactly. I wouldn't even necessarily say like that equates to anything. Um, that, that's the main thing I want to throw in. But yeah. aside from that, realistically, you know, maybe large scale particle style, um, you know, that kind of depends in the Yadamir if you think it's omnidirectional or if not, that's also like a bit of a predetermined on your end. But I will say, you know, I'll put it like this. If the Kage do catch Itachi outside the Susano, um, that's probably it, like in a similar capacity to what they did with Madara uh, with that type of strategy. I definitely think so. It just kind of depends, like, if the fight goes that long for them to kind of analyze the battlefield, uh, kind of how, how it goes then. Kind of have to argue some character stuff, but 
I think the main thing also it goes off of Kisama and who he fights first. Because exactly. I think the the five Kage's best chance is if they take down Kisame relatively early. Like maybe they catch him lacking with particle style or something like that. And it's five of them against Itachi. And then in which case, okay, I can see a, a, a much more confident scenario for the five Kage. So it is pretty predetermined. Um, I'm just of the opinion this group, this duo has like the best chance of any of the duos we've listed so far. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And once again, before we move on to the next stage, so I don't get called an Itachi tart. Again, we presupposed Itachi was on his meds and he's near uh, Edo Itachi level. So we didn't say this is Seki Itachi. We didn't say this was Sasuke. It's Sasuke Itachi where he's near death and we're not saying he's faster than Rekaga or anything like that. This is again, to keep it clear, Itachi with his meds, theoretically. And with him being basically at Edo Itachi's level, besides the obviously infinite stamina and fatigue immunity. And the reason, again, we did that is because it's less complicated. We don't have to, like, give all these hypotheses to, like, oh, the sicker Itachi is, the less chance of success. Like, it's not as complicated. So, again, I want to make that clear so people are not calling me an Itachi tart in the, in the comments or anything like that. This is a relatively healthy Itachi, not sick Itachi. So. so, yeah, that's that one. But a uh, final one is White Mass Obito and Zetsu versus the five Kage. So White Mass Obito, to quickly just scale this guy, I mean, this guy's a monster. He was able to contend with Kasim Tunarta, Kakashi, Guy, and Killer B simultaneously while also restraining six Bijou at the same time, which were kind of tugging on his chakra, if you will, literally tugging on the chains that were controlled by his chakra, and he was able to have all this success, right? So as far as speed, he, he is blatantly above even the Ray Kage at this point. We're talking about KCM2 plus levels. The KCM2 Naruto is basically the the full potential of Kurama QB chakra mode until six pass eventually, of course, in stage mode. So Naruto is certainly faster. It's illustrated blatantly that he got faster. You know, Kakashi mistaked him for Minato because he was able to kick away Biji bombs and things like that. So that just gives you a sort of litmus test as far as where White Mass Obito is in terms of speed. And on top of that, Teenage Obito was able to contend with Hokage Minato. Uh, did you want to talk more about that and how that how that really went? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, my opinion on that is that like I don't know like how, how people perceive that fight, but it seemed very like relative. Like Obito's moving at the same speed as Minato. Obviously, that's not you know Minato's max speed. He can body flicker and you know amp himself up further, and then you have um Flying Thunder God, which is above that. So it's like you know I'm talking it's strictly like the, their combats like running at each other. Like Obito is able to contend with him. Uh, there's multiple moments where Obito actually catches Minato lacking. And, like, Minato is, like, really saved because he FTG somewhere else. Uh, even then, Obito is like, oh, I should have pulled him in faster. So, it's like, you know, you have this Obito who's just consistently able to press Minato. And, you know, this kind of gets into... I know people argue this all the time. Like, the diction between, like, me, how Minato describes the encounter with Obito and how the encounter went. But Minato himself finds Obito very threatening. And yep. he's like, I need to take this fight out now. This guy's dangerous with dangerous ideology. And his own diction, he's like, oh, you know, Obito was seeing through all his moves, which obviously, like, wasn't the case. But he's probably referring to a, a couple scenarios where Obito just kind of predicted what he was going to do. For example, with him, like, protecting Naruto and whatnot, where he places tags ahead of time. So there is a couple examples of that. So this is 14-year-old Obito. Um, and this is also off the idea that you think for, um, Hokage Minato is above any of the five Kage individually. Yeah. Obito would then go on to get a Rinnegan. Which is, you know, it verbatim amps him. Like, the Rinnegan is stated to have his own chakra. His own, like, chakra in the eye, however you want to word that. Um, yeah. Maybe I've worded it correctly. But essentially, you know, he has all these amps. And then, you know, he's shown fighting alongside Madara uh, as a relative force along the Ten Tails with the Shinobi Alliance. With, like, relative shown uh, fire style. So, it's just very implied. He's just a Madara level threat. And that even in one of his weaker incarnations... He's doing well against a fighter that is pretty objectively above any of the five Kage by themselves. That's that's pretty much the way I'd put it. Exactly. And to really pedantically analyze the Hokage Minato fight between Teenage Obito fight, like Thunder God said, it was fairly contentious. Like he said, after he failed to calmly away Minato, he simply said, I'm about to be faster next time, implying he wasn't even using his full speed there. Then later on, when they're like face to face, Minato then goes on to say, man, it's going to come down to who hits who first, implying, like, this guy's speed is near my level. Like, he sees him as a threat after the, the couple of encounters that they had. So he even thought he was moderate. He's like, who the hell are you? Like, you're, the only guy capable of this would have to be moderate. 
Like, that's how, how much respect Minato had for Obito and how much he deemed him as a threat. I'm not saying he's relative to Hokage Minato as a teenager or like equal in speed or anything like that, but there's enough contention and enough respect shown to imply, okay, he's arbitrarily relative to Minato. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a threat to Minato. Like, Minato yeah. can't just sit here and like watch him. No, he, he actually has to think of strategies. He's like, it, it's, he has to teleport around the village because, you know, even though it's like a space-time ninjutsu surpasses his in the second Hokage. So yeah. it, it's, it's like, even if you think Minato is greater, which is like fair, fine, that's that's totally acceptable. And yeah. I probably lean towards Minato being stronger anyway from that encounter, obviously. Yeah. Um, just the idea that like he's giving Obito such respect is pretty telling. And I will say the fact that Onoki also bought that uh, Obito was Madara despite fighting Madara and like being exposed to his abilities before is also just telling you that so you know just just more more icing on the cake yeah, exactly like, yeah yeah and just to put even more icing on the cake compare Joni Minato's reaction to the Rikage speed and Hokage Minato's reaction to Obito against Rikage he was just casually looking at him coming at him he's like all right let me get out of the way let me flip this kunai out of the way with Obito he's like this guy has to be Madara like what the hell is this you know now that's just a further reinforce the premise of the speed caliber that white mass obito is we're talking like thunder god said a guy with a renegon that blatantly stated to amp your chakra and amp your abilities so he's, he's most definitely faster even orange mass obito is probably faster than, than uh teenage obito let alone white mass obito who has a renegon now so that just all these puzzle pieces that we kind of put together establishes the premise that he's substantially faster more than likely than even the ray kage so what happened here is we would have five Kage versus an immovable object, if you will, with this object not being touchable because the guy could just face, it's even passive. Kamui's even stated to be passive. He would, they would just face through him and he could dispose of them as he wishes. He could pick his poison. Kamui, uh, if, we're also presupposing he doesn't have the Bijou here, so he could theoretically use Renegon abilities. He could use Shinra Tensei. He could use Chewbacca Tensei. Um, he, theoretically, he could pick his poison with these guys. Their best win con, truly. And this is probably the best conclusion we could come to is Obito simply miscalculating. Um, simply just saying, simply just maybe, maybe very, very badly underestimating the Kage. And maybe he says, oh, these guys are complete fodder. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let them like do what they want. And then he miscalculates and he gets clipped by particle style or something like that. Besides that, it's just, he's just blatantly, I would say at least a couple of tiers above all these Kage at this point in yeah. time in the narrative. Uh, but yeah, what I do you just, think about the, the battle? How do you think that would go? I think he just washes. He's just going to fly around with his gun by, like, slapping them around, reflecting their ninjutsu. It's really yeah. not going to be an issue uh, for them. The main thing I would see is, like, if he attempts to BFR one of them and, like, they appear in the Kamui dimension to actually hit him when he reappears. But he, the thing with that is, like, he could just, like, BFR one of them and just retreat to the... So here's, there's a couple layers to this. There's a couple layers to this. Yeah. I, I've argued this in the past. I'm of the opinion that when Obito teleports somebody to the Kamui dimension, where he, he can actually like choose where they teleport, um, it's very fundamentally different than where he phases because he phases on a plane of like, it's like a rel it's like, it, it like matches up with like planet Earth in terms of where he plays, like he, um, he phases like relative like portions um, compared yeah. to like Earth and his plane, if that makes sense. So like, for example, when he's like uh, phasing throughout the air, it's in a it's in a set point in the Kamui dimension where he's also phasing throughout the air. But the reason I argue is that that he can actually manually Kamui people to different dimensions is because he actually does Kamui uh, Fu and Torne exactly. in the Kamui yeah. dimension. Yet Karin and Sasuke are in there and just don't see them, they, or they don't see Obito phasing in there at all. So it kind of implies like he can drop people off at certain points in the dimension. Um, and it just seems that in the Kakashi fight he miscalculated. Or that, you know, Kakashi just happens. I also argue this, Kakashi also could have probably followed Obito's chakra signature back to where he was, like, comboing in. So, kind of look at it like that. Even at the most bare-bones interpretation, he could just hop in every time he BFR somebody, Genjutsu them, break their neck, and keep going back and forth. And it really wouldn't be an issue for them exactly. at all. Exactly. So, yeah. I just can't see it. He also has options to separate them. He can do the Uchiha Flame Formation Barrier, trap each of them. Maybe except Onoki, but... This is the same barrier, low chakra technique that was just tanking the A-Tail's punches and burning his hide. So none of them are going to be able to break it, or if they do, it's going to take time. Again, maybe barring Onoki. Uh, aside from that, I mean, the fact that Obito can summon the ghetto statue is really all like that you really need to say for this yeah. to be an absolute stomp, honestly speaking. So 
I think he just has a good time, honestly. I don't think they can really do anything to him. Just like they were really like, Madara had to like kind of let them. He, he basically kind of yeah. be, had to be like Ines Susano. He's like, oh, I couldn't absorb their ninjutsu because I was slowed down. Oh, they got me in this strategy. Time to like actually start trying. So, exactly. you know, I, I just don't think they have it. Yeah, and the calm wing conversation is certainly interesting. I agree completely. Like uh, like Thunder God said, he did calm wing away Donzo's you know right hand men, and we never see them again in the calm wing dimension. When Kakashi fights, when Sasuke and Kari are in there, you don't see any whiff of these guys. So it's more than likely that he can not pick and choose where within that respective dimension he can kind of throw these guys. Can I add to that real quick? I gotta yeah. say, not to interrupt you because I know I just talked, but he also like is able to pull weapons out of the combo dimension too, ironically. Like he has them stored somewhere as when he's like shooting the Renegon rods at uh, at the, you know, the eight tails. And then even when he's shooting giant kunai at the Shinobi Alliance, you don't see any of this. Like they they just exist somewhere, and he's pulling them from a specific location. So just to like add on and supplement that. Yeah, that th that just further reinforces that premise. So yeah, he he most certainly can dictate where within the dimension he could throw people, summon weapons, etc. So yeah, he could certainly more than likely be a far of these individuals as well. Um, but like Thunder God said, he's a ghetto statue, and he's essentially the closest thing to Modder we have within the Akatsuki here because. He, like Madara, has a Renegon and a Sharingan. Obviously, they're not one-to-one -one as far as caliber, but he has those Dojutsus, respectively. Um, his speed is... The discrepancy in speed is quite substantial. Um, and similar to Madara, he'd have to kind of let them get get one up on him. Like, Madara was just, like, Thunder God says, sitting there and saying, uh, let's see what they've got. Like, let's see what let's see what these guys are capable of. Like, maybe Obito would do that. It's possible. He was, he was pretty arrogant in the war arc, but I don't think he would let it get that far. Um, and he's probably... But the only individual in the war besides Hashirama kind of illustrated to be compared to Madara. He, Madara never states that he's like on my level or anything, but we see how they're like standing on the ten tails together and they're sort of like the two big bad guys in the war, like kind of standing, you know, parallel to each other. It, it's kind of implied that he's maybe in that rare air with the with yeah, the white even mask. there's like a chapter statement that remarks like him and Madara as like the greatest evils have united and stuff yeah. like that. So it's like, you know, it's definitely implied. I, I would just say, like, even if you don't think he's stronger, he's on that tier. Like, that's yeah. very, that's made very blatant. So it's like the fact that he's just like, oh, like, he and Madara can do this. Like, if one, if one, one of the two was lacking, you would have seen it. That's pretty much what I'm getting at. So it's very, exactly. it's very consistent. It's very consistent. Yeah. So, uh, like we said, this is essentially the closest thing to Madara's the five Kage. Zetsu, I mean, Zetsu could just sit and watch. He's not useful. He's a retcon man. He's stated to not be a, a, a battle. Uh, you know, combatant at all. He's just a retcon man. He can actually, like, what people don't uh, really see is he, he's capable of being able to latch on to opponents, steal the chakra, and give it to his allies. He could do that. I mean, not like Obito would need it. He's far superior. But Setsu could do that. Maybe he'd probably get washed up by Onoki, though. If anything, the best thing for him would be to hide. Uh, he'd just get in the way, probably. So, yeah. Uh, White Mass Obito, probably has, out of all these stages, has the best odds. Uh, he, he's just the most capable, the fastest, the mo the highest of calibers in, in this discussion for any of the Akatsuki discussed today. So the, the odds for him are very high, and he's the closest thing to Modder we have as far as antagonists. Yeah. So that's essentially it, folks. That's the video. We thought it'd be a great discussion to kind of give credit to the Kage. I mean, the Kage did fairly well in these stages. The five Kage are always underestimated and talked down upon because Madara washed them. But Madara is in a whole different league, man. He's in a whole different yeah. league. He's vastly superior to the vast majority of the Naruto verse. So we have to show him some credit here. And we thought, in, just in general, this would be an interesting discussion. But of course, you know, me and Thunder God know that the Zakatsuki scalings are certainly ambiguous and arbitrary and subjective for some people. Um, so make sure to let us know in the comment section what you think. Do you agree? Do you not agree? Whatever the case may be, make sure to leave your comments below. And we'll catch you in the next video, folks. Uh, yep, see you yep. next time. Peace.